almost by your standard big smile. <laughs> Sorry, I won't bore you too much until the main event. You know, the start turn, and you know, that's the beginning and by so the main event. Uh, just to pull aside into all the blue sides get done to us, uh, we start with something called a mundan, which is like an introduction or something to think about, thoughts. Um, and it's for someone like me who's been given a position to, to deliver a talk to actually reflect on the true meaning of life, I guess. Um, and it's after like we're thinking and asking Maharaj, people will say, if you're going to use this bundle, this vessel to speak through, whoever comes out of this mouth may, may only be real words, may only be truth, may only be sat, and may, may, may only be Guru Matipatya, the word of the Guru, and the wisdom of the Guru, and not my own thoughts, my own biased opinion, or my own kind of uh, buddhi, my own intellect, may only be the Guru's teachings. So, the show, the show this final offer today is by Sri Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj in Sri Dasangran Sahaji <coughs> where they describe the wonders and the greatness of the Khalsa so everyone who's rather reading this translation as we're going through thanks for the text thing Wahimdi <laughs> <laughs> Jada Gora Mari, Mata Pulana Mana, Eda Sadana Daya, Tapa Sanjab, Eka Vinama, Eka Vinama, Eka Pachana, Purna Jota Jaja Katala, Tava Kala Satahi, Nakala Sadana, Anil Vira Hokirana Saka, Vira Parna Paya, Bikana, O Daya, the Sapa Meda Tu, Moka. Par Otare Kesava Namaka hat Sotar Fina Dana Moko Baha Dehe Baha Dehe Bithana Moko Baha Dehe Baha Dehe Bithana Swahibuka So the topic I was we kind of just discussed about just to use this talk fit nicely with Bhaji's talk as well, the revolution, the identity the crisis of the 21st century. The name of the talk, funny enough, is actually called Roots, and the question mark is to question what are roots? Rabani tells us in the wisdom, and that's pretty much pretty logical. Some of you may come in thinking, oh, by a medical student, Bhaji's going to talk on roots, maybe well learn the biology system, I've got an exam coming up or something, and Go do my A-level GCSE revision or something on roots and trees and stems and whatever happens in trees. Photosynthesis as well, I know that. I mean, never any other Um So you might, some historic of roots, what's why you can talk about, you might talk about the same things we've heard in the past. What do we mean by roots? The one in the wisdom tells us, which is common sense if you think about it, a tree, they cut off the roots of a tree, or a plant, or anything. This is a da 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 the, the dhanina, the branches, everything will slowly start drying out and literally fall down, become snow, you can snap them in half and eventually become compost, you know, everything like that. So, what are the importance of roots? Let's think about what a root is. If you have a tree, have a drug, everything or most things come from the tree. The reason it's standing so strong and tall is because of the roots. The moment you start digging out the roots, the tree or the plant or anything, the vegetation starts to go to a side and eventually fall over and the whole process starts of it drying out. But so now we've got to think, what are what are our roots? What are uh, what are our jala? Or digging hair? Iki hoogia. I swear people are expecting a picture of Guru Sam there, picture expected, expecting a picture of someone's secret history. But instead I put a picture of quite a dangerous looking both I guess actually. I wouldn't be I wouldn't want to meet even a dark alley or anything. You might shit the half your head out, man. But who is he? Now, the start of this talk is actually going to start from uh, a poem on a book actually called Roots. Way beyond my days, probably most of the people here. Um, it's actually uh, a series of books by someone called Haley, I forgot his name now, Alex Haley. He wrote a book trying to discover who he was. And as he looked into the side of history and saw inside his forge, 
in so his own life and everything. He found out that actually it all started from this guy over here. Now he's actually um, an actor in the program we made about it. And it, what his name was, Kinta Kintu, that's what his name was. So the whole story goes, I'm not going to talk about Alex Haley yet. I'm just going to talk about this person on the, on the screen at the moment. This, if you want to use the word Kala, but I don't want to seem offensive. But this uh, black person with, who's on this picture here. So Kinta Kalu, Kinta Kintu, something his name was, was the son of Madinka. <laughs> I'm not going to the history of Madinka as well. We're going to stay away from Madinka's history. He was actually the tribal leader um, in what in modern day Ghana. He was a tribal leader, his father was, and it was a kind of a ritual or a practice where the tribal leader's oldest son will go for a hunt and he'll bring wherever he can back, be it, you know, a, a chicken, be it anything, he'll bring back his kind of his glory from the hunt. So they sent him off, he was um, King Dakum to something. They sent him off to do his hunt. Oldest of four sons. He never came back. The funny thing was, well, the irony is, is that he went to hunt for an animal, but was already out there hunting for black slaves. So he actually, he went as to be the shikari, he went to become, was the, went as a hunter, but himself was hunted. So he actually was hunted, and there's a black trade slave, tra uh, slave trade going on massive in the peak uh, uh, 1750s, 1800s. And this young man over here was captured. He's captured, he's beaten, and he's taken to America, shipped off to America in horrendous, horrendous circumstances. The whole story goes on, we're going to skip through it quite quickly. He ends up in America, he's auctioned off in a trade market, in a slave, black trade, slave, uh, trade market, and then he's sold. His new owner says, your name from now on, I don't like your name, Kinta Kuntu, whatever it is, your new name is going to be Toby. He goes, no, my name is Kinta Kuntu, son of Malinka. And he goes, no, your name's Toby. No, my name's Kinta Kuntu, son of Malinka. The name's Toby, kicked him on the face, your name's Toby. And he goes, kept on arguing. And he goes, he got beaten up so much, eventually he said, you know what? Young man, I'm going to be here. My name's Toby. I'm happy to be Toby. First point. He didn't give up easily. I'm a school teacher. It's been live broadcasting, so it's probably a new experience for me as well. I'm not used to doing talks to a living I'm watching, but <laughs> <laughs> or five people are watching, I've been told. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm not used to this kind of video. I don't know who's watching. Could be the Indian government, for all I know. Hello, Morty. But obviously not. I think it's well, I don't know if you've got to do, but regardless, so um, I, I teach in a school, and I've taught in many schools. Uh, one of the schools I taught in, I came across <coughs> an individual, you know, Kinta Kuntu, he said, no, my name's, you know, Toby, my name's not Toby, it's Kinta Kuntu, son of Malinka. I'm thinking, this thing about who we are. I remember teaching a Benjamin Rendawa. Thinking, Benjamin? Rendawa. Benjamin? Rendawa. After I'm currently teaching a Cyrus Panissa. Cyrus? Panissa? Point being that, have we got a similar case? Are we giving our children names who don't reflect who we really are? Are we cutting our own roots before, or cutting the roots of our children before they have a chance to grow? So he kept it going. He goes, fine, you can name me Toby, but under or within him, he always remembered his name is Kinta Kuntu, son of Adinka. Amai Mirapur Adasi. He kept remembering that my, my father was a king. So, son of Adinka, Kinta Kuntu, starts working, he tries to run away, wants his freedom, but all of us want freedom. And I think Vice will talk a little bit about the idea of identity and his revolution and freedom. He tries to run away, they cut off his foot. And they go, try to run away again, we'll cut the other foot off as well. So he's now crippled as well. The whole story goes on, it's, you know, it's a long, long, it's a quite a number of books, it's a long book and it's got different, you know, a lot of eight, nine episodes, hour long. The story carries on, he marries another slave. From that slave, he's got offspring, a girl, and the Iklo, Ab Anfar, he had no idea how to read or write anything. His wife, the same, do not know how to read or write. Instead, the girl who they gave birth to, they used to look at other people, listen in. But at this point, what happened is obviously black people introduced to America, they're treated really badly. Slowly, this, they were allowed to come to the houses. The wives became house slaves. They do the iron and got <coughs> look after the kids and everything. Same way his wife did that. She thought just by looking and listening, she learned how to read and write, read and write, read and write. She taught her daughter how to read and write as well. So the daughter eventually reads and writes as well, and starts getting a bit of education. 
time came, she's married off to next town, which I done here. She is married off, he's obviously left without his daughter, his only offspring. So what happens next? And I'm gonna quickly cut through this very, very quickly. So daughter's married off, her new owner realizes that she can read and write. He rapes her and then becomes the father of her only son. His name was George. So for Kinta Kuntu, she sounds children's names like George. The story goes in two ways now. That daughter whose name was I think was I think Kelly they called her. Kelly then goes on, lives her life out, you know, sees the whole, you know, black trade, the whole black slaves, sees black rights slowly increase from being outside, being beaten, to allowed into houses. She actually goes back one day and looks for her father and mother because she never knew what happened to them. And this is what I think is amazing. She goes to the grave of her father, crosses off, rubs out, whatever, gets rid of Toby and writes on that, Ginta Kuntu, son of Madinka. So the daughter, so the daughter still remembers her father. She now teaches George her history. Eventually George, children go on, everything happens in America, black people have equal rights, everything happens. And now George's ancestors, or Kinto Kinto's ancestors, are born in America under the name Alex Haley. So Alex Haley doesn't know nothing, but he remembers six words from the language. So all the way, our system going on and on and on, they preserved it, saying, you know, this is what you have to remember, this is who we are, we're son of Madinka, we're this, we're this, that, and that. And eventually, Alex Haley, through his own research, through his own effort, research, and goes back to Ghana, looks for his parents, looks for everything, and realizes that he himself was from the, from the Nai, from the lineage of Madinka. Now, that's probably pretty irrelevant if you think about it, because Alex Haley was an individual who found his roots. Through his own hard work, through his own efforts, through his own means, he went and realised who he was. And the question is, what is our identity crisis? Alex Haley was one person from that family to leave. We are a community. We are a brotherhood of Sikhs. And we still face, as a community, face our identity crisis. He is an individual face the identity crisis. He wanted to know who he was. He knew he was an American. He knew you know, that he, this wasn't his native country. He realised that. He wanted to find out who he was. So he goes off and does that. You can read the whole story on the book or watch the videos as well. So look at the sister dance at the You might say that if it's root, if we kill off our roots, what have we left? Now, what is our identity crisis? When is the last time we hear a cow saying well, the cow is going meow? When is the last time we see a cat going moo? We don't. But why is it? And I, I, I'm going to be very, very, very careful about what I say and where I phrase it as well. But why is it that? Why have we forgotten our roots? Some of you may sit thinking, you know what, Fadi talking a load of nonsense. I haven't forgotten my roots. Fadi, you know I know everything about it. I know everything about Tiki. But in my opinion, okay, Maharaj has given us three roots. You might think I'm going to sit and say, you know what, if you want your roots, you've got to go home today, stop cutting your hair, stop eating meat, stop doing this, stop doing that. And by next week, Monday, you've got to be on Bhattari. Some of you might think, oh, Fadi's going to be radical. He's going to start to ask me, Dal you're not Wednesday. At least one Wednesday after, you know. No, that's not targeting. I'm going to accept you, though. I'm going to say, let's just rediscover our roots. Let's rediscover who we are and what we stand on. Because when we see Sikhs, and people in the Sikh community, not following the basic tenets of our faith, that's the most disheartening thing. So what are they? Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj in their wisdom. When they're traveling around the world, they give us three, what we call nowadays in our in schools, three pillars of Sikhism. In reality, to the three hukums of Guru Sahib, that as a sect, as, as an individual, we must live by these words. This is who we are, this is what we do. And these are all characteristics of good virtues. These are virtuous. These are what, these are what we should be about. These are, uh, as a community, our virtues. These are community, as a community, we are recognized on a national level, but at an individual level, we need to think, oh, am I recognized like this? In the place I work or the school I go to, do people recognize me for this or do they recognize me for other things? So, first one from Nadia, he gives us in the Japra. Waking up in the morning, or whatever time you can, and actually spending time focusing on Rahi Guru. That could be done through reading Japaji Sahib, or by reading Sukhumani Sahib Jai Bhava Himataki every day, or by sitting there for five minutes that day. I am sure no matter the most busiest person in this world can take out three, four, five minutes. 10, 15 minutes to read Japji Sahib, or to do five minutes of Simran. 
when we start discovering the roots and we start discovering who we are and the power of Zahibul of Simran, we would never ever let our children grow, grow up without that. Speaking from my own, my own experience, if anything in my life, like I've said it many times in early talks, from a, from a family perspective, I was probably deprived of Sikhi. You know, my parents could not care less about Sikhi, not their fault, they're working not, you know, literally 12 hour shifts, they had three sons, they had you know, a lot to do. I can't blame them. But as individuals who are actually in Sikh psyches, are educated, are getting educated in this country, we can make a change, we can make a change with our own children, because eventually all of us here will be married, obviously not literally all of us right here, right, so we've got to find the list right now, I'm not saying that, but I am saying eventually outside this room, we would obviously have, hopefully, we'll say, but how about a in front of the city, we'll tell you, my lad, and what virtues are we going to give our children? Because it's all about roots, think about it. If we as a generation, we think, you know what, don't remind my kids, buy your kids will hold it up, you know, those kids will be the next Sikh camp, Sikhi camp, or whatever, the Sikhi up on AKT, like, do that, yeah? See society talk is his kids will do it, don't my kids can do what they want. But eventually what will happen as a community, the brotherhood, that message won't stay. More people will be confused in identity. I keep saying that, I've said this many times, about three years ago an article came in The Economist about, um, there's a wider article, it wasn't based on Sikh, uh, Sikh, kind of fat, Sikh issues, um, about interfaith marriages. And what the, one of the conclusions they drew from the article of the research they did, I think something like 40% of the kids, so I think 60% of interfaith marriages, they're looking at Catholics, it's not just Sikh in the community, I think it was something like 60%, you can find in the economy, 60% of mixed marriages end with divorce, and 40% of, uh, of interfaith marriages children are confused because they're brought up with two religions in their house, because they don't know whether to follow Islam, to follow Sikhism, to follow Sikhi, to follow Catholicism, to follow Christianity, Judaism, they have no idea. The children end up with mental illnesses because of confusion, they end up depressed because they haven't got those roots to hold on to. If we give our children roots when they're growing up, saying this is who we are, this is what we do when we have a problem, our children would not have those problems with the blessings of the Lord. Our children would not go through depression, would not go through the issues that we have as a society because they know what to fall back onto. Even if they're not become the biggest turban wearing people in the world, or they don't wear the biggest kafan to university. That's not the issue. The issue is they know what to fall back to. They know that if I have a problem in my life, I'll go to the Gurdwara. I'll go to the Gurdwara and ask Maharaj for help. Not to a grooming situation where another faith takes advantage of my vulnerability. It's not showing me sympathy, it takes advantage of you. And that's what if you look at the grooming cases, especially ones we've been involved in, a lot of them, I'm going to say openly that the girls of faith involved in those grooming cases are from instead, you know, unstable families who have mental or she or, or has some sort of issue which you can't deal with. If we teach our children this is how we deal with things, we go to the Guru's house, the Guru has never turned anyone away, the Guru has never made one, any of our problems, has never left them unsolved, they will solve them if we go with the true faith. So, now I'm just going to have the faith in the Guru. Next thing, get a second of me. The two Sakiya over here now. I remember there's a great saying, say, called Baba Thakur Singh Ji. Um, they once went with a few other things, and quite a lot of them, went to someone's um, house. And the guy was a millionaire, absolutely minted, loaded in Punjab. And the Singhs were like, okay, the, the Singhs were Baba Ji, I went out to the Singhs and stuff, want to give them, give them food, I give them food. And Baba Ji goes there, looks around, and the Singhs were like, really nice, you can't have no idea what's happening. Oh, brilliant, and Baba Ji looked at the Singhs now. He's not going to The singers go, why Baba Ji? I eat the Changani like that. doesn't look nice, isn't it? This guy has called you over for Langar Pani. And you'll say, no, I'm not going to eat it. Why not? And at the point, Baba Ji goes, it all looks good over here. Ask him what he does for a living. I think his, his uh, trains are something like um, slaughtering animals or something like that. And um, beef, or something, beef or something like that. I'm not sure it wasn't a beef bag with beef, but probably something to do with that trade. And Baba Ji was the so think about if our kirt, uh, which basically means our way of earning money, our way of living, and our work we do is not pure. That is not following the hukum of Guru Sahib. The Guru, Guru Sahib's hukum is kirt agarni. The first fundamental pillar of Guru Sahib's message is Naam Japan Abuja is kirt agarni. Our means of earning money has to be pure. 
if we set good examples to our children, again, a lot of this is towards children, in the sense that we will become parents here one day, if we can live by example, our, parents, our children would want to be like us. There's an, I'll tell you an insight blood between Ammatharis. A lot of Ammatharis, young couples, worry, will my children grow up as Ammatharis? We know this is the best, you know, a lot of my uh, non ummatari family ask me, you know, Mani, will you get your children, will you get your children take Ammatari straight away? Or are they going to wear Pagda straight away? Are they going to do this? And I say to him, look, I go, you will raise your child the way you will raise your child, you know, whatever you think is best for that child. The same way I'll raise my child in whatever way I think is best. I think and I believe and I know as a fact the way of the Guru is the best way and I can only encourage my child to follow the same path. If it would be hypocrisy if I said to my child, but uh, you know, son or daughter, do I need to go sleep, I need to go sleep, I need to work. That's it, you know, how the child will work hypocrisy hypocrisy. One of the most inspirational things I heard was a singing news from my daddy family goes to me. She goes, I looked at my parents and I wanted to be just like them. I thought, that's it. If you want to raise our children in a decent way of living, we don't want them to be drinking alcohol 24-7. Even though we might do, even though we might go clubbing, we might do that, but we wouldn't want our children to do that, would we? We wouldn't want our children to do half the stuff that we might get up to. And that means we've got to live, live by example, we've got to lead by example. So you get up the kind of thing, and Saki Guru Nanak is the manager, which we all know, which I'll say very, very quickly because I'll end it within five minutes now, or five Nadaloji. Uh, Malan Kapango. At that stage when Guru Nanak Ji Maharaj went, went to Bhai Lalo Ji's house, Bhai Lalo Ji said, Guru Nanak Ji, eat my prashad. They were two days old. Guru Nanak Ji ate those prashad, they were and they had them prashad. At the same time, when Malan Kapango heard Guru Nanak Ji was in, I think it was, it was in the area, I think it was in they go, Guru Nanak Ji has to come to my house to eat. You know, we've got dain, jar, everything, kheer, paneer, jo marzi huwe, everything's made here. Guru Nanak Ji has to eat here. Why is he eating over there with no, no hot food? There's no dal, no sabji, nothing. Why is he eating there? At the same time, Guru Nanak Ji must say no to Malik Bhargo. goes, I'm not going to eat at your house. At the same time, Malik Bhargo goes, no, Malik Ji has to come, sense guards and everything. Eventually, Guru Nanak Ji goes to Malik Bhargo's mansion, not to eat langar, but to take the prashadda, the the yeah, but I give one up. You know, you can imagine a good old prashad, the give one a taja, nice. They held down the right hand, held by Laloji's prashad, and the left hand, sukka, nothing, all crumbling apart. Squeezed both the prashad there, and as the prashad of Malapargo came out, corn, blood, blood for all the people who work on his farms, and he used to pay them nothing, treat them as badly, treat them as slaves. All the people he used to do a lot of this. That corn, look at that corn, deep, deep, deep corn, in the clear. And when he took by uh, by Laloji's prashadda, out of there came milk, the purity of Laloji's work. Even though by Laloji wasn't minted, who said preferred his prashadda, <coughs> preferred his. Now, if you think about it, who does Guru Sahib love the most? You know, I want to be so successful in life, I want to be minted. But in that, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, nine times by Laloji's name is mentioned. Jaisi mein aave khasme ki bani, taisara kari gyan, ve lalo, nine times ve lalo comes. So Guru Nanak Ji Maharaj is the message to Pai Lalo Ji. Not even once does the egotistical Malik Pargo's name come Guru Bani. Nine times Pai Lalo Ji's name comes. So, Kirta Karani, the purity of our lives, the way we live is our roots. If we live in a pure way, our roots will be solid, our roots will be pure. Last thing Guru Sahib gives us here, Vani Ke Shakana. So as virtues, these are three virtues Guru Sahib says every sect should have. We should have compassion and everything else as well. The Vanaki Shakra which we share our living. It is a hukum from Guru Sahib. It is not an option. It is not it, I've heard people say, you know, you know what, it's not even seva. Getting the swan, giving one tenth of your earnings is hukum from Guru Sahib. Get up at the swan of Tadanaya. So wherever you earn, be it something from tuning someone like we do, we give one tenth of that money to to Gurukar, to Gurdwara, to Seva, to Prachar, to anything, but it's not yours. Oxfam, whatever you want to give it, that 10% is not yours. And that breaks away our attachment with Maya. Because it hurts every time you say 10% of your earnings to the the swan the counters we've got. Oh god, that's 250 quid there after all this. Dokalagadai is attached to Maya. To break that bandhan, to break that attachment, we just have to give one to to give to the people. And Saki comes in a in Guru, I think Guru Arjun Devji Maharaj come very quickly. The, set, the Sikhs were traveling all together to Guru, uh, I think it's Guru Arjun Devji Maharaj, Guru Harbogan Sahib Maharaj, Alexander Pai Katusha, 
Katusha, I think his name was. And what happened was that a lot of them, they had all this langa pani, but they had all this food ready to give to Guru Seb, and someone was really, really hungry. I think it's by Katusha, I think his name was. He was really, really hungry, and he goes to him, you know what, I mean, I've just joined your kind of travel. Can I actually have something to eat? He goes, no, this langa pani for Guru Seb. The intention was right. They wanted to give something to Guru Seb. By the time they got to Guru Seb, I think it was a honey or something like that. The honey had got worms and it was washed away. And it all got, you know, in there and it got up there. What's that? It was like, got a greenish thing called maybe yeah. maggots and stuff like that. Oh, we'll again, da, da, da. And uh, so obviously Guru Seb was not going to eat that. The second, the second stop and Guru Seb gave Maharaj, what's this all about? We've come with such a pure intention to give you Langar Pani, to give you this Mithara. But how could that happen to us? How could this go crab? Does this normally last forever? And Guru Sahib will tell you why. Because you refused langal, you refused food of your sacred mind. You should have served the Sikh, you should have served the Sangat as me, and I would be happy. So when we do Seva, when we give Langar Pani, all the institutions I've now opened up, you know, up and around the homeless runs we do, we should serve those people like the serving Guru Sahib. Because that's how to get the Krishna of Guru Sahib. Because Guru Sahib gives a greed ki mu guru ki gorak. And the mouth of a greed is the, is the ghul of the guru. That's where the money truly is needed. So, those are our, our virtues as roots. Those are our things we should have in our life. What are our physical appearance? What is our identity physically? First and utmost is our panch kakar. Our panch kakar. Obviously, not all of these not, don't stop when Kirpan and start scaring people at the uni with it. But the point is that we should aspire to be towards the Guru. We should aspire to be like the Guru as well, because the Guru is perfection. Guru Gobi Singh Ji Maharaj's life is perfection. We should aspire to be like our father. A good son is someone who does Vada to feel what you mean. We should be looking to do Vada to ourselves fun. But ultimately, our first and foremost is Kesh, is a case. Saying that Dara Hul Vadiya Lagda, even in my mind, Murta Yaya, but Vadiya Lagda, believe it in yourself, because that is our more, that is our stand coming head case, and our children as well. So, how are we destroying our own identity? This is the question. I've got a few things I've just seen on live, which I've uh, seen. How are we destroying our own identity? A well known individual, I won't name who he is, I don't really give a hell if I name him, I really don't care less, I don't care less, I don't care less, I don't care less. This individual, are we supposed to follow religion even if bits of it might be out of date or irrelevant for modern times? He runs a Sikh organization in the same state, uh, in London. Um, yeah, three Sikhs. You for real, mate? He runs a, yeah, so is this not identity crisis? Is this not going back on the Guru's word? Are we not killing our own tree? Are we not being, well, we're not being Alex Hale, he's obviously not. We're not looking into our roots, we're not really such, we're not spending that time to build that relationship. Instead, we're cutting off our own roots, holy holy, slowly and surely, well, surely, we're cutting off our own roots. And to be honest, the worst thing is, if we do it to ourselves, it hurts. If we do it, it hurts so much. We've got so many other people doing it. Another example, up on it, is, is this what Guru Sahib wants from us? Have talent. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this individual. You look at my cousin brothers and cousins' arms. All of them got talent. They can't be on them. That's how you turn. Is that what Guru Sahib wants? No. The Guru Sahib would prefer you rather go to the God's order and watch five fine day rather than you go and get a talent of saying the Kanda or you know saying Kardistan and Jam or something. No. Guru Sahib would, would rather prefer you to go to Oxfam to go to home the shelter and help people where it's actually needed rather than just trying to show yourself. A lot of people say, oh. I do this to show that I'm a Sikh. And I'm thinking, when is the last time I did something to show I'm a Sikh? I don't need to start by Iyya, Dara, Rakhiyaya. I don't need to show the world I'm a Sikh. When they see me, they know I'm a Sikh. I don't need to show anyone. Rather, with this is the things we're doing now to break our own jara, our roots. Externally, our roots are getting ripped left, right, and centre. This is something that came on the line a while ago. I don't see why. I don't see what Pakistan, Pakistan community see in Sikh girls. Fair enough, we get taught to convert people and bring, uh, bring them into Islam. But why do our Imams try and say, try and say, try and get Sikh girls? Everyone's human being. It's not Sikh girls are diamonds. The real, they, sorry, that's the four years ago, I think it is. We have Twitter messages as well. And it's, it's terrible. You look at it and think, you know, some of the Sikh organizations who really bring this out, out in front of everyone, think, bloody hell. 
our jada, our roots are getting cut left, right, and centre. We have individuals in the Sikh community. It's so cutting our roots. Can you think, is there any hope? But there's always hope because Guru Sahib is with us. It's so long as we keep faith in the Guru, we keep our our way of living pure. There's always hope and people will always see the better life. The last thing, seek someone respected in India. And with that slide, I'm going to leave you with life fans to finish it off on there. You want to close the video on me? Anybody here in IT? Jesse, what you do IT? Anybody here in IT? Jesse. You do IT? Jesse. 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 J
My name is Sukhvinder Singh, and uh, you can call me Sukhvinder Singh. Uh, <laughs> my name uh, it makes sense, right? Um, and, yeah. So I just want to warn you that you know this talk might get a bit too intellectual, too, <laughs> too intelligent. I'll be using big words like and uh, and. I'll just use it. Um, that was it. And maybe. Just like that. But maybe we'll use that. Hang on. Use it again. That's it. Those are the two big words down, so you can relax. Right. I can relax. Right. Uh, I shouldn't have really uh, I've done that. Because it is uh, what the topic that they've given me. Okay. Now, I don't usually do. Uh, uh, so you might have seen that. But it matters to us, yeah? It should matter to you if you are a human being, yeah? And dog. Yeah? It doesn't matter if you're a Sikh, you're a Muslim, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. But those images should matter full stop if you're a human being because what's going on, what's happening in Punjab right now and has been since uh, the partition, since the British left, uh, we have, I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with the history, um, but like me, you probably know the brief events, what happened after uh, 1947 when the British left. A lot of Sikhs lost their lives, lost their land, lost their property, and they were walking into uh, a country that was now free and they can live as free people in that country because they have fought, their ancestors, their forefathers have fought for that freedom. And so the time is ours now. We can go and live in this free land as free people. But if you're familiar with your history, you'll know that they were gravely mistaken. They didn't know what was coming to them. Imagine you being uh, oppressed for so long and you were ruled by, not your own, you ruled by somebody else with different values and people who didn't really consider you as an equal, okay? You, let, you lived your life as a single, right? So, uh, <laughs> that we will not, yeah, we will not a slave, yeah, but we will get up and we will fight. Those who left their homes, yeah, can you imagine the joy they must have felt when the freedom came, you know, at last, yeah, at last the freedom, the day when we're going to be free and all those people who fought for that freedom, yeah, they're going to be recognized. Okay? Can you imagine how happy they must have felt? But the day of independence wasn't a happy one. Okay? Now, I'm not here to talk about the independence and all that history because there's a lot there. I just want to set the scene that what you see happening in Punjab is not just the recent uh, events that have taken place and all of a sudden, see, it's been living in India uh, without any phosphorus very happy and all of a sudden boy now that's why i'm talking about 1947 those people who thought they were free now they could no longer have they would no longer have to live okay under someone else's identity under someone else's rule yeah they'll be free people but what happened in 1947 first of all those who had homes in Punjab, that is part of Pakistan now, they have to leave their homes. Hands up if anyone's seen this video of uh, this, the old guy. We're talking about, you know, we touched upon conversion uh, of this old person who goes through his own eyewitness account where he had to, to witness his father Okay. kill his own daughters 
because the mob outside of Pakistani men wanted to have, they said, just give us at least one of your daughters and we'll go away. But he chose, and the daughters they chose, to either end their life then and then, then go with those men. They happily lined up where the father got his kirpan and one by one he took all their heads up and he killed all of them. And he, he says he goes, not even a single one, one of those girls flinched. Can you imagine something like that, witnessing that and that you know in your next? None of them flinched gladly because they wanted to die as daughters of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj and didn't want to anything else, anything less. They'd happily choose that path than go away. Now, can you imagine uh, that's who we were? We are talking about identity, our identity is all over the place at the moment. But, I digress, going back. So, assume that we have long gears and we wear a kirpan, they have a weapon, there, you guys need to be very careful of these people. They are criminals. So these people happily entering a country which they think is free now, and freedom is theirs, and that's what that country's got planned for them. Straight away, 1947, those people crossing the border, having lost everything. Those fathers who had to kill their own daughters so that they won't be raped by those men who were outside their doors trying to take them away from them. Those were going into a free India to live their lives as six and free. And that country said, well, you guys are criminals and you will be treated as that. Be very careful, very mindful of these six. And I will encourage you to read your history if you don't know it already because there's a lot there I'm not you to read what happened to your people you owe it to them to find out what happened to your people I'm gonna fast forward I'm gonna leave 1947 there because from the very beginning the scene was set for us that how are we gonna be welcomed in this, in this country and as people who have our own identity, how we are going to be treated, see that, that precedent was set from the word go. Okay? And we are familiar with 1984, what happened. Yeah? Everybody should know. If you don't know, you should know. Yeah? Again, it wasn't just something that just happened. Before 1984, and since 1984, Things have not changed in Punjab. How the government wants to deal with you it hasn't changed. Other things may have changed, but the way they want to deal with us, the way they want to treat us, right from 1947 all the way up to now, that has not changed one bit. That has not changed one bit. That mindset of theirs is still there. What they don't like is that this spirit that we have of keep fighting for our identity and we will not just be poor. They don't like that. They're trying, they have tried everything that they, they can, but they have not succeeded completely, but they have succeeded. And if we break today, do not make a decision Okay? in how we are going to be, how we are going to be a part of our own faith, of our Sikh term, yeah, our own identity. If we don't sit in here and make that choice today, right? identity that we hold so dear to us, they don't like it, they, don't, they, they want to crush that spirit of ours. And what's at the, the centre of all of it is our term, our faith, our Guru, our Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj. You take Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj out of six, life, that's six finished. 
That was nothing left. So they are after the, that very thing that you hold the most deep, even your family's life. They want to get to that. Yeah? So, uh, a revolution in Punjab, is it, I'll put a question mark there, is it really a revolution what's going on? Yeah? Or is it something that we have witnessed <coughs> similar events before and, you know, nothing's come of it? And was it the fault of those people who started fighting? Yeah, and they made a decision how they wanted to deal with it. Or is it our fault because we didn't carry the fight forward? But you guys can make that decision yourself. Yeah? You guys are quite here. You can make that decision yourself. Yeah? So I'm just gonna uh, so thank you. Uh what I'm going to talk about, okay, is trying to put what's happening in. Hands up, by the way, before I go on. Is if you actually know, or you might have read something or seen something on TV. So I'm not going to. Ask a lot of people here, almost everybody, you know, sort of knows and aware. So I'm going to. Uh, sometimes what happens is you look at things and you think, why? Why is this happening? Why is it happening to us? How can somebody even think about doing that? Yeah? But what I want to do is context. I want to talk about what Guruji says, the times that we're living in. It is possible for people to stoop, stoop that low. It is possible for people to behave worse than animals. It is possible for people to treat other people worse than dirt. It is possible. Guru Sahib has warned us. Okay, so I'll just kind of put that in context, and then I'll talk about history and Khalsa tradition. Like I was saying, not the very first time that we've been oppressed or something like that has happened. Yeah, it's been happening throughout our history. But you know what? We've always dealt with it. Okay, and how have we dealt dealt with it? The our history, the Khalsa tradition. Just going to touch upon that, and then talking about recent events. Where we stand today, and what can you do? Yeah? I'm included in this as well. What can I do? See? Right? So, just the last bit, I want to kind of open it up to you guys to have some suggestions from you guys. Okay. I'm going to try and press the right button. That's it. Okay. So, context Guru Sahib talks about the age that we're living in. So, if we Read Guru Sahib Ji Maharaj, he shines the light on the times that we're living in. Yeah? Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. The dark age of Kali Yuga, this is the, the, the age that we're going through, it's the age of Kali Yuga, is the knife. And the kings are butchers. Righteousness has sprouted wings and flown away. How true received. Kali Yuga has become the knife. Then the kings, those who we died for, those people that we are responsible for putting them in power so that they can live free, they can practice their faith, their religion. The thing that you hold for those masses that we gave our lives for, yeah, those kings now have become butchered in broad daylight. Broad daylight. They don't care if you're aged. If you're just a newborn baby, they don't care. They don't care. If you are of age when you're just about to get married, they don't care. They don't care if you just come out of university, you've got the whole life in front of you. They don't care. They don't care if they shoot you. Your mother, who's disabled, can't look after herself, will just die because nobody will come and look after her. They don't care, they will still shoot you. They become the butchers, those we trusted, and those we put in power with our very blood and sweat, those are the ones that have become the butchers. Righteousness has sprouted wings. Righteousness, I laugh, you know when I look at the news coming out of, of India, and uh, they, they like to say, Sare Jahan Se Acha Hindustan Hamara. 
Yes. You may sing those songs all day long. But just by singing those songs, your country is not going to become great. That's what it means. That our India is better than the whole world. That's a, you know, that's a good line to, to use. Yeah? Good line to sing. But in practice, it is a lot different. So righteousness has sprouted uh, wings and flown away. In this dark night of falsehood, and this is what we're living in now, if you look at the events and what's going on, yeah, it's, it's like going through a dark night, pitch black. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know which is the right direction. All you can do is pick something, pick a direction, and walk that way, hoping that that's the right you know, sort of, uh, direction that you've chosen. It'll lead you to where you need to go. But there's no guarantees. That's the state of our month at the moment, that we are living in that dark night where none of us really know for sure which way to turn, what's the answer. How do we stop all of this? Why I say that in this dark night of falsehood, the moon of truth is not visible anywhere. Doesn't mean the truth doesn't exist, it's just not visible. The truth is there, but we can't see it. The, the answer is there, but we can't see it. Maybe if we go back to our history, we might see the answer. I have searched in vain and I am so confused in this darkness, I cannot find the path in egotism. They cry out in pain, says Nanak, how will they be saved? How will we be saved? All of us. What is the next step? No person, like I was saying, those images, if we are human beings, full stop. We care. What's happened to those? How do we stop that from happening? It's not just those two that have just died recently. It's a system. In Punjab, you're living in a system where it's only a matter of time when it's the turn of your family. We might look back and say, well, my family's all right in Punjab. It's only a matter of time. The system that we're living in, if you're gonna live slaved in here and in there, then that's the best place to live. Because they want you to live like that. But if you want to live how our father, Guru Gwen Maharaj, has taught us to live, and Guru Nanak Dev Maharaj has taught us to live, then you're going to have a fight on your hand. Cry, cry out in pain, say Nanak, how will they be saved? How will you will be saved? Just going through the history now. The point I want to make is this. Sometimes we do <coughs> our Sikhi tradition through the lens of the world. Does it fit in to what the world believes in now? Yeah? But what we don't do is look at the world through the lens of our Guru, in the light of Guru Bani. We always do it the other way around. Yeah? How does how do uh, how does Guru Nanak Dev Ji how did our gurus okay deal with situation? Very briefly, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj he is standing up to Babar. First of all, the people say that oh I uh, met somebody and they were like oh you know what you might have met people like that. Right? Oh we like Guru Gobis, uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, very peaceful man. He, you know, fed the hungry. But I don't like uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji because he had a sword <coughs> and he fought. I don't like that. I'm thinking, okay, classic example of the person, okay, viewing the greatness of our gurus through the lens of the world. What the world is telling you, this is right and this is wrong. Doesn't see for why was the Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj had that sword in his hand? What that Sri Sahib in his hand? What was that situation? The world will not look at that. They don't want you to look at that. What they want you to look at is those images that you see on TV. Yeah? Oh, see it's a bunch of hot heads. Right? You fight. Yeah? And they'll show a footage of things. 
obviously the forefront, obviously fighting. You, because that lens, okay, Guru's always taught us to stand up for our right. Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj stood up. And people say that Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj didn't have a shasta. I'm going to use the word shasta. Yeah? If you don't know what the word shasta means, okay, look it up. Right? But I'll tell you the word I'm using instead of. I'm using shasta instead of weapon. Weapon, as soon as you say weapon, people are weapon. Oh, weapons of mass destruction. Yeah? Or this kind of thing. But the thing is, they have dirtied that word. Shasta to us is such a pure word that it's, it's in Gurbani. The names of the Shastas are in Gurbani. And we have bow to those Shastas because they are there. <coughs> Gurnan Devi Maharaj had a Shasta. Gurnan Devi Maharaj carried a staff with him all the time. Gurnanak Devi Maharaj could fight. It wasn't like Gurnanak Devi couldn't fight. You know the tradition of our, uh, everyone's seen Gatka, yeah, or Shastra Vidya, you call it. Where do you think that comes from? Everything started with Gurnanak Devi Maharaj. He could fight. He taught us to stand. So when Babur came, invaded India, and he was killing innocent people, Gurnanak Devi Pasha Maharaj stood there and said to him, that what he was doing was against humanity and was wrong. Good Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj convinced him, he was put in prison. Search that Sakhi, that, that story of the Guru. Yeah, I'm not going to go into it too much. But the point from, from the very first day, we get involved. We don't say, I, we don't get involved in politics. Good Nanak Dev Ji could have gone, well, you know, these invasions happen all the time. I'm not getting involved in any of this. I'm going to just stay out of it. No, because innocent people were just being killed and butchered and women taken as slaves right in front. And Guruji didn't say, well, you know, it's not my business. I'm just going to preach Nam Japo Wan Shaku Kepitara and that's me done. That's what I'm here for. No, he stood there. So it doesn't matter what the odds, we have to stand there. Guru Nanak Devi Pasha Maharaj taught us that. We have to stand there. Stand up for our rights. Stand up for others' rights. Look at the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj gave his shahidi. Somebody asked me a question. They said, why did, the, did that happen to the Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj? You all know what happened, yeah? And I was like, well, obviously, Guru Maharaj is trying to tell us something. He's trying to wake us up. Up to, to us. That's our gain, our loss. But Guru Maharaj has done what he has always done for his Sikhs, is given his life. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj sat on the Tati Tavi, the hot plate, Miya Mirji. He came and he said to Guruji, he said, Guruji, just, just you say the word. Every person standing here, because I will destroy them all. You have to just give me the word. And Guruji said, and Guruji said, I'm getting that strength from you, Guru Maharaj. I'm getting that strength from you. And then Guruji returned and said, if you get that strength from me, then don't you think that I can do that myself? No, he chose to give the Shahidi. He's trying to wake us up. He's trying to wake the Sikhs up. So, the Shahidi happens. Talking about Khalid, somebody who just done that to our Guru Sahib. Yeah? What's the Khalsa tradition? Okay? Who succeeded uh, Guru Arjan Ali Maharaj? Guru Hargobind Sahib. You can see the Tarwar, the sword. Okay? He didn't wear one, but he wore two. Before he was given the Gurgaddi, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj himself said to Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj that a time has come no longer, okay, because I'm going to go to the end 
of what I'm going to show the world the absolute limit of peaceful martyrdom, the absolute limit. And read your history, the Shahidi, the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Devi Maharaj went to that extreme limit of giving a peaceful Shahidi. Guru Maharaj is saying, even to that extent, the world has changed now. No longer those people are reasonable. They have become, those kings have become butchers. No longer, no longer we are safe. You have to defend. And Guru Sahib Ji, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj not had one, but had two sisters. He wore two karpana. He had an army. He kept an army and he got justice done. The perpetrators of of, who, of the of perpetrators who carried out the heinous act, yeah, those were punished by the Khalsa. Yeah? Those were punished by the by the Sikhs themselves. Nobody else wants to punish him. Those kings, yeah, that have become butchers themselves, they wanted the Sikhs dead anyway. So they were all, if someone else is doing that job for us, then uh, do you think we're going to punish them? No, we're going to reward them. But the Khalsa got their justice. Chandu Shah, who was responsible for Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, he was punished by the Sikh Sangha. Guru Teg Bahadur Ji Maharaj, Shahidi happens, peaceful Shahidi happens, yeah? Chote Sahib Jale, their Shahidi happens, okay? Now, how did we get justice then? Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj goes into the court of Bahadur Shah, who succeeded Aurangzeb, but he needed Guru's help. He needed Guru Gobind Singh Ji's help. He said that uh, my other brother, he wants the throne. He's going to kill me. I need help. And he went to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Guru Sahib Ji gave him bakshish. Now think about this. This is a Khalsa tradition. The person who is Maharaj for help is the son of Aurangzeb who is responsible for the death of his own sons. That's the Khalsa way. Khalsa tradition is that we go after the guilty. Guru Sahib Ji said, Aurangzeb is the one who is guilty. His son is not a will. You have. Jo sa nuchai dana, tu de ni sakna. Because whatever we want, you're not going to be able to give it to us. But the Shah goes, no, no, Guru Ji, no, please tell me anything. I'll give you my whole life because I'll give you anything you want, Guru Sahib. Maharaj can they so Think about it. That what we're going to ask, you're not going to be able to give give that to us. How can that be? Anything for you. Maharaj can they so Yeah? You thought about it? Yes. Then Maharaj said, okay, this is what I want. Maharaj pulled out a list. Of those responsible for the martyrdom of the Sahib Jali, the martyrdom of Guru Dev Bahadur Ji Maharaj, a whole list of those guilty that carried out those despicable atrocities. Maharaj said, Here is the list. And Yama Bahadur Shah said, Give me some time. You're not gonna happen. You're not gonna happen just now. Why? Because those people, okay, because I've just become the king, Maharaj. Right? And if I, you know, those people, they're bad people, but you know, they, I, <coughs> I still need them. Yeah, I'm not fully established yet as the king. I still need them. So just give me some time. Maharaj laughed. He goes, he goes, man, to the because I did say to you, think about it, because you're not going to be able to do what I'm asking you to do. Maharaj, can they? 
give me back the list of marriage for bangers. I want you to give. I want you to give you the opportunity to show to the world that you may be the son of Bahadur Shah. Yeah? The lunatic. Okay, so son of Aurangzeb, the lunatic. Yeah? Hell bent on converting all of India. Okay? And things that happened in his kingdom. You may be the son of that butcher, but you have a heart that you can do justice that a king sat before us now can do justice and give justice to the people I wanted to give you that opportunity but it's not going to happen because the Khalsa will get justice themselves you have the Maharaj giving Bandha Singh Bahadur the deed he's giving him arrows Again, a lot of history they are jumping through. Read your history, how Khalsa got justice. Guru Sahib, you gave the theme to Bandha Singh Bahadur. Those perpetrators, those killers, were punished by the Khalsa. Nobody gave us any justice, but you know what? We're used to it. But you know what? We also know how to get justice. I don't want you to forget who Bahadur Shah was. The son of Aurangzeb, who is responsible for Guru Sahib's own son's death, and Guru Sahib's mother didn't turn him away. That's the way of the Khalsa. But also, the Khalsa will not let the guilty just pass on. We will not do that. And you know what? What's happening in Punjab? The government don't like that about us. They know that, hang on, these guys will not just let it go, let it be. Now look, you know, we've killed thousands of your uh, people. We've raped many of your sisters and mothers. But just, you know, forget about it. Just, just leave it. They know that we are, we are not those people. They don't like that. Where the Khalsa is different, how we, how, we, how we deal with this stuff. Just a bit of history I wanted to go through that also... Uh, I just want to go through very quickly. Time the British. Anybody, everybody here knows about Jallianwala Bagh, yeah? Anybody here who doesn't know Jallianwala Bagh massacre? Because when uh, again, hundreds of innocent people, mainly Sikhs, were shot and killed for a uh, justice to us. Did the British hand over the killer of Sikhs to the Sikhs? Or even punish them, punish that killer themselves. Anybody here? G General Dwyer, I can't remember his name properly. What happened to him? Did the British punish him? Who punished him? We did. Khalsa did. Yeah? Doesn't matter whose rule you're living under, but the times that we're living in. Understand your situation. Do not be just fooled by people around you. You have to wake up. Guru Sahib Shahidi happens to wake us up. We got justice ourselves. British didn't give us justice. We got the justice ourselves. Okay. Recent events. Just going to quickly run through this. Okay. June the 1st, at Bodh Jawahar Singh, please go to Punjab. Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji's suit goes missing. So Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, someone take the suit of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. What happens? That straight away, the Sikhs get together and they start doing, uh, start, they start the agitation. They go to the police and say, look, someone's taken Guru Granth Sahib Ji's suit from what, what are you doing? The police, as always, oh yes, we've got people who anything yet but be hopeful nothing happened you know one thing about India I'll tell you I don't know how many of you are from or ever you know ever lived in Punjab I'm actually from Punjab I lived there and let me tell you one thing if the police wants to find something yet they will find it that's how it works in India hide anything they will get to if they really want to get there they they can because down there everything then they talk to somebody. 
Yeah, they got so many ways they can find out if he's entirely sure. But God got a sign, but had us me, but God post is put up by those who've taken the suit of Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj. What they've seen, you can read that. That's what they've posted, okay? And the language they've used is despicable. Some of the language used words used for our group, yeah, is despicable. They said, "We've taken your group. We've got it. We've got your group. We've got your group." Here they were mocking us. You know what they said? What he says in this letter? You can have a copy of this if you want and read it yourself. They said these people from uh, that Sirsia Ram Rahim cult. There's a cult in Punjab. <coughs> Hands up if you're uh, aware of this cult, Ram Rahim. Okay. There's this cult in India, and they're his followers. There's we have guru. Okay. Now you have put a price on our guru's head. Okay, their their guru they said, "Look, and it's somebody said four lakh or four lakh." Okay, now I've read it you know, in, a, in a rush, so I might be getting that you know sort of figure uh, wrong. They said, "But you know what? We will." Uh, said that you offering four lakh to find uh, our guru and deal with him, but you know what? We'll give you that lakh. If any of you, so-called Khalsa, so-called Sikhs, can find your guru, we'll give you das luck. He goes, we've got your guru, and we've got him here. We'll give you das luck. It's on this letter that was posted outside the Gurdwara. In July it happened, and we're we in okay, Come on, yeah. We still, even though at every step, this government has showed that our lives. Don't matter. They have shown that they do not care about our identity. They do not care about our guru. They don't care about nothing. But we still have faith in you. God, can you please go and find these people? They have said this, and they said that in this letter you will find out in days to come what we'll do to your guru. Okay. Now, just imagine, right? If you got a ransom note, so somebody abducted your father, yeah, and they were saying, "We've got your father, yeah, and we're going to do things, and you will find out." What would you do? This is where beyond the just lack of saying our own. You and me are here today. Is of Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj, and they've got. Our guru and saying, uh, we'll see if in the surrounding areas we will, you know, find somebody. We haven't found anybody yet. Then what happens? So June the first that happens. Then late July maybe. Okay, now this is. I'm going to skip through this very quickly because it's going into the politics of what's going on. Yeah. A God. So you may understand. You may not understand. If you don't, then I'll please forgive me because it's our culture at the time. September 24th, a guard that the issues the edict pardoning uh, NT6 Hafsa Kult thief Gurmeet Ram Rahim. So we all know what he did back in 2007. He dressed up as Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Okay, imitated Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Okay, and like Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj prepared Amrit, he prepared his own version. Took the mick basically out of him, and the Sikhs never forgave him for that. Yeah, but here is a guard that. Yeah, they're puppets of the government themselves. Our so-called leaders, they're puppets of the government. They, he didn't even ask for a pardon, but they pardoned him anyway. If you look into it yourself, I don't know how much you research yourself, but if you look at it, it's, it's and, I, and I go through the events, and we're such a big laughing stock. He didn't even ask for an apology, but we gave him one anyway. We said, yeah. Will forgive you, mate. Yeah. That decision condemned worldwide. No Sikh accepted that decision to pardon him. You know, that's a big thing alone. Yeah, for us. But the person who's got kinds of cases of rape 
against him, Gaidan, and murder lodged against him. Yeah? And our supreme authority has decided to forgive this. Our very own system is under their control. Uh, September 28, Pontic bodies resolved to call Sabak Khalsa on Diwali. Sabak Khalsa, the Grand Assembly of Sikhs, held at Amritsar and stands for the entire Sikh nation. It is literally the voice of the people. It is called when key decisions related to the faith have to be taken. So they said, look, you know, this is too much now. The people have to come together. The Sikh nation has to come together. And we have a system to do that. And that's about Khalsa. October the 5th, Sikh bodies to meet on October 12th to discuss about Khalsa. Okay, I'm going to go through all of this very quickly. I'm just actually going to skip through this. Yeah. But this is a political situation, you know, that's, that's going on, okay? What happens then, October the 12th, 1st of July, that troop of Guru Maharaj goes missing. How many months? Almost, what, four months? October the 12th, police still have nothing, yeah? What happens? 112 angs of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj found, yeah? Of the missing troop, and you know where they were found? They were found on the street. If you ever been to India, if you have been to a bend, you can see the state of the streets. That's where your Guru's angs were ripped and thrown on the streets. And in the Narayan, you know the, the, the Narayan that run with the sewer pani? They were found in the Narayan. Your Guru's angs, 112. Angs of Guru Granth be found at Kotakpura. As soon as that happened, can you imagine if it had ever, Bahi Guru, Forgive me for saying that, but can you imagine if this was close to home, something happened like that? How would you feel? The Guru Maharaj Sroops gone missing, and this is what's happened. People are mocking us. Peaceful protest, peaceful protest, still. And I say this, you know, if somebody swears, this had a pure somebody swears that a father or a mother or somebody, you know, will go and punch them. Yeah? We'll go as far as you know taking their heads off. This has happened to a guru and the Sikhs are still following Khalsa tradition at this point. Saying, well, okay, this is what they've done. All right, we'll give them some time. Yeah? We'll give them some time to resolve. They had four months, they have done nothing, but we'll give them still a bit more time, yeah? Give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll still trust, we'll put our trust in them. We'll say, okay. Protest begins at Gorda, but our peaceful protest. October the 13th, Pajar police, they make arrests, they make they arrest some of the Sikh leaders. Uh, October the 14th, early hours arrests made Pajar police, and then on October the 14th, they open fire on those people sitting there, just doing their nickname, sitting there, Bani, uh, reading their Bani, reading their Japji Sahib, or just doing Simran. One of the saints who became Shaheed who lost his life, was actually serving Lunga to the Sangha as he was shot by the police. Countless injured. Why? Because they were peacefully protesting that that's happened to the group. And I'm just thinking that how could they keep so calm, still sit there and say, Sapanam Bhai Guru, when that's just, they've just found 112 angels of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj out on the streets in the gutter. How can they sit there so peacefully? I'll give it to them for doing that. You know that they should have turned around, the police should have turned around and said, look, that, you know, we, ain't, we are feeling ashamed and shameful at what we're witnessing. But we should go out and find these people. Look at these six, look at their patients still. But you know what the police still decide to do? No. They turned their guns on us. Two saints became Shaheed. They were shot dead in broad daylight. So on the 15th, another Birdby happened. So it just didn't stop there. They had a plan for other Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj groups. So another Birdby takes place in Kuraya Sangaroo. October the 16th, now Akal takes back their hukum nama, yeah, saying, well, we will not, we'll take that pardon back, yeah, because they realize, hang on, we're in it now, the mistake of blunder that we've made, yeah. And then, 
the birbi carries on. Yeah, disrespect. Disrespect is such a small word to even use. The, the most despicable act you can ever think of happened again. More birbiya ajitwal muga that the soups were are going to be it. fire. They, they they lit the fire and Guru Maharaj birbi happened. Mishri wala Pirozpur, 33 angs were ripped again of Guru, from Guru Maharaj, from Guru Nathai. 33 angs again at Mishri wala Pirozpur. Now, Bajja Khanna Malwa, Guru Sahib Sarup, Agan Pate burnt. And then, Baat Viril, Khadur Sahib. Angs, no sorry, I made a mistake there. This is where the 33 angs were removed. From Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. So it carried on happening. Okay, I'm just going to uh, quickly go through the But the protest, still, peaceful protest continues. Yeah? Uh, told the same thing, some Sikh leaders make an agreement with the police. Now, I don't, I'm not going to leave name names here. But you know those very we trust to be our leaders. Those who we see at the forefront. Yeah? Because if I say those names, a lot of people are going to get upset. They made, yeah, underhanded deals with the police. Because when they were arrested by the police, yeah, nobody wants to be arrested by the police. People like me can just get up there and talk the talk. Yeah, Carl said you do this, do that. But you know when the police take you in, yeah? When they get that done down and you know there's the wacky one, nobody wants to take that pain. Only those Sudame, like those two warriors who stood their ground, can take beatings like that. Yeah, take what may, but those so called fake leaders of ours, yeah, who were there at the forefront of the protest, yeah, we are you know protesting, those are the same same people who got us to take off our shusters. They said, you know those leaders at those peaceful protests, what they said, to, they said to the Sikhs, because the Sikhs, after, yeah, knowing how the, the police treats us, yeah, they came prepared, said we're not, no longer, because remember Khalsa tradition, that with this talwar that Guru Maharaj has given us, is not to oppress, but to defend, and they were following the Khalsa tradition to feed <coughs> the Kripanna, and whatever they could get hold of. And you know those so-called leaders they said Kalsa you will be here for a peaceful protest please keep your karpana on them you know take them somewhere and store them and you know when when that happened that happened before the before the shooting because police were preparing so who are these leaders they're actually in favor of who they're working for are they for the punt or are they for for the government and soon as the Singh some of them were, some of them were reluctant they say no we're not gonna you know be part from our shusters but some of them but most of them, because well, that's what the Pons decided we'll do that. And as soon as we became, yeah, just open and like sitting ducks, yeah, and the police with their water cannons, yeah, with their lantia <coughs> and with their bullets. Yeah, that's how they treated us, our peaceful protest. So October the nineteenth, so there's a pressure on the police. To go and arrest somebody and find somebody's done it, and they've done a classic one. You know what they do? <laughs> what they do? This is the only Punjab police can do that. Yeah? Only this can only happen in India. This can only happen in Punjab. So what what do they do? The police arrest Amritari Singhs. The ones who were there protesting peacefully, the ones who laid their life. Yeah, protesting, they arrest them. <coughs> you must have done it yourself. Oh, you must have done it yourself. Only happened to <coughs> Protest continue, Birbi continues. Pin Kareal, Jalanda, Sulups again. Right, I'm quickly going to just run through this. See, life matter. Yeah, the hashtag been going around. To you and me, they, they may. But does it matter to them? 
They don't match them. That so that 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 cult leader, yeah, his cult members blocked the road for three days. Yeah, three days in a row. Yeah, nothing moved. No bullets fired. Nobody arrested. Nobody killed. Another sect, the Zalmanan sect, burnt shops and property in Punjab. Yeah, went around on a rampage. No bullets fired. Nobody. Mob of Hindus burned a dastar. They took a dastar, this very gift from our guru that he's put on our head, his bakshis, this dastar was taken by the mob, Hindu mobs. The star and in Gurdaspur, yeah, in the streets of Gurdaspur, they burnt out the star that the star of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj that he gave us. the star, yeah, it's not my the star, it's the star of my father, is Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, was burnt in broad daylight, yeah, in Gurdaspur. What happened? Did the police do anything? Did, it, did they fire any bullets at them? No. In Ludhiana, mobs of Biharis attacked police, no bullets fired. My point is not this, that they should have killed all of them. Although personally speaking, I would welcome that. What I'm saying is, that why is it that those bullets are reserved for Sikhs on peaceful protests? Where do we stand today? This is the situation. Guru Nanak Sahib burnt, arms torn apart and thrown on the streets. No perpetrators is found by police and they've got no leads. Yeah. What they've done is, they've arrested the Amutais. I mean, even like, I just, how, that's how stupid it is that my brain can't, can't really compute, thinking, hang on, did the Punjab police, I know they're just a bunch of losers and jokers, but, you know, are they like, kind of capable of doing something so stupid? <coughs> they have done it. Maybe they thought, you know, this plan is so ridiculous, that may work, you know? If we just blame the Sikhs themselves, it's so stupid, this plan. Maybe it's so stupid that it crosses a limit where this plan no, no longer is stupid, but it'll make sense, and that's what they've done. Two innocent Sikhs dead and hundreds injured with life-changing injuries. You know, we talk about those things who have died, yeah? Um, those who, who didn't die, yeah, but were injured. You know, in Punjab, living in India, to make a living is hard work. No state's going to uh, give them job seekers or a house or you know, some kind of benefit. They have to rely upon themselves. Those who have gone through, or survived, but they've gone through <coughs> life-changing injuries, no longer than we able to earn a living by themselves. We're going to take care of them. They're your brothers and sisters, they're my brothers and sisters. Who's going to take care of them? They're not going to take care of them. They just won't bring how we didn't just kill them. But you know, it's such a sad thing. Such a sad thing. Some of those, the sort of lives they're going to, going to be uh, living, they might have been better off dead. Such a, a sad story. Uh, no action taken against the police. So those who fired the bullets, right? And it's not just happened, it's happened before in our in our times. It's happened. 2007, when it when Dasya did that, things became shaheed. When by just passing only like what three or four years ago, again in a protest, when the police just openly fired on the Sikhs, lost his life, and two again. And in Kashmir as well, there was a Singh who lost his life as well. What can you do? What can we do? Now well, that's, you know, open to us. What can, what can you do? What can we do? Do you think that the, the British government is interested? Do you think they're interested in your life? Like, in your brother and sister's life? Do you, do you think they're interested in Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. You know, their ministers, the politicians, David Cameron, may come to the Gurdwara. Oh yeah, I'll wear a you know, little a bandana. Yeah, I show respect. Yes. Does he really care? He don't give a damn. You know, the Chinese pre uh, 
prime minister, president, or whatever it is that came, yeah? So many Chinese people protested about the human rights issues, yeah? Do you reckon Ten Downing Street really cares about that protest? They don't give the Queen called into the house on the job, yeah? And you, do you reckon the British government or anybody else really cares? No, nobody cares. Who's going to help you? Who do you think is going to help you? What can we do? I'm really sorry to that I've gone over the time, yeah? So I apologise for that. But uh, I was hoping that you know we'll get some sort of discussion going at the end, perhaps. But I'm realising that <laughs> it is ten past eight. Yeah? But maybe I want to leave you with this. Yeah? Maybe I want to leave you with this. Guru's done what he could for you. He's given his life for you and me time and time and time and time again. And what do we do? We need to wake up and say, what am I, how am I a part of this? How, how am I a part of this contribution to my funds? Yeah. Where am I in my identity? If I can't do anything else, what can I do here? Because you know what? There is always something that someone can do always. There is something that you can always do regardless of where you are. I'm going to leave you with that. I was hoping that I might get out. Unless quickly somebody wants to you know, say something or shout something, then you know, by all means. Otherwise, I ask for forgiveness. Because uh, it's a subject obviously close to everyone's heart. And it's in my heart, so I'll probably, you know, sort of uh, say something I shouldn't have, so I apologise wholeheartedly. But this concerns everybody. Yeah, we have to do something. We can't just sit here, and listen to a talk, or watch a TV, and you know, shake our heads and go, "Oh my hell, you know, it's really bad," and then carry on. This cannot, this cannot happen. Our Guru's given his life to us. Why have we given it to our Guru? So, I ask for forgiveness. Did you go to the seminary? Yeah, we are in the park. Okay, yeah. No, we've got enough time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I've talked enough, but you know, anybody here uh, got any suggestions what they want to what they want to say on the matter? Or, you know, you wanna, or something, or if you want to ask me a question about any of, you know, what's what's happened, or something there that you didn't, you know, understand, because I talked about the, you know, the Gao Tak, we talked about the Panj Jatida, I didn't talk about the Panj Jatida, but that's how it works, the five Jatida, the leaders, on the five different ducts, you know, they, they're making a decision that affects, you know, all the sick points of you being, anything with regards to that, or I'm really interested in, what do you think that you know, sort of our next move you know, should be? Because this is you know, the brain power sitting right here. We're here to have education, yeah, do you know degrees? We must have done something you know, good to get this far. Then again, I don't know what this university is like. <laughs> Going back to my uni, the uni I went to, I didn't really have to do anything. <laughs> Just walk in. And then there you go, that's it, you're in. Literally in. <laughs> Adi. Um, I was just going to say, I feel we should be more proactive and like reactive. Mm -hmm. So, like, as opposed to, like, when people are talking even over here, it's like, I feel like it's already in other news. And, like, my opinion is, like, it's really <coughs> sad to see that, like, the cause that Mara's to the Golden Bingy Mara's out to is taking it in front of, like, something. Um, I think in terms of uh, uh, like social media and stuff, we get a lot of petitions and it's, it's quite easy to sign up to them, but they don't really do anything. If you find uh, uh, kind of movements that we do have, like I Pledge Orange, stuff like that, it kind of goes, you know, tips really high and then it just drops again and then you know, no one really remembers it now. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I you know, again, I agree with Benji there uh, that 
you know, for what we were, there we are on our knees begging for somebody else to just if we were the ones, people should come to us for justice. Say, I'm not getting justice. Can the cars help please help me? We were the ones who used to give deliver justice to people and here we are today begging at these government's doors to give us justice. I can't totally agree. and I totally agree with Bobby here that you know sort of on social media we have all these movements here, so many signatures we can get. By the way, please forgive me, yeah, I'm not against any movement that you know people who are there to get signatures for whatever petition, whatever they do. I'm not against any of them. Yeah? Uh, but that's my just personal kind of you know take on it that we've just been reduced to that. You know, it's just easy, easy thing to do. It's very easy for me to like just go and sign a petition online, <coughs> and then I I think that I've done enough down that or stick done. You know, to kind of like say to myself and yeah, I've done at least I've done something. And you know, you get to the point where you don't have to do anything. They just write you, you what you need to say, and you just you know copy paste and send. And you know, so we think that we've done enough now. Yeah. So although that sort of stuff has a place, yeah, like I say, I'm not knocking it. That has a place, but <laughs> if you think that's going to change the situation, then I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Um, just a really small point. We made a meter to start by looking at. Um, making sure that we're not doing the okay ourselves and we're doing happening in our local areas as well. Yeah. Um, good as well. I don't know that how many of us have seen or handled uh, wedding cards, for example, like a small example, with the Barney on them. And maybe we could make sure that if, if we ourselves going forward and our families going forward don't print our good Barney that we feel so hurt when we hear about these arms being torn out, if we can make sure we don't print that on cards which are going to be thrown in the bin and going to be left over the score of cards and things, if we can at least bombard that make sure in our houses are good kids are kept with respect. Make sure we are respecting good events that be in this country at least. That's a small step we can take. Yeah, that's a brilliant point. Brilliant point, because we do better be ourselves. You know, when the very good point where wedding cards, <coughs> how could a barney written on it? But you know, after you've used the card, card like dates to go on the wedding, to go on, what do we do with that card? Most people probably just throw it in the bin. That's no different, although, the intention is completely innocent there, they don't really know. But the act itself is not different to what they did. We're throwing them, you know, sort of on the streets and we throw it in the bin. Where does that bin you know get taken to? And that's where that good money, you know, is going. Maybe you know steps like that. If we can learn anything or do anything from it, yeah, that's a plus, that is a positive. It might not affect the uh, you know, the, what's happening in Punjab directly, okay, you might not be able to make a change directly, but things like that, yeah, they, they will help our lives, our Jesus, yeah. So that's a very good point that make sure that the Guru Karns that we have you know, around us, you know, going in and making sure, are they taking good care of Guru Karns, how you are, you see, There's a Guru Karns, yeah. On one, one bed, yeah, they have so so many Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj Shroop because they, that bed it can't hold that many fruits. They've been doing it for so long, right? And uh, somebody rang to ask them how many soups you have. And this guy, when I met him, he goes, You know what? I was so ashamed because he goes, oh, I'm still so ashamed because I had to lie to them. I had to lie to them. But what he did actually do, although that's why he said to them, look, you know, we only have you know, X amount, but he then you know, got involved and got it sorted that you know, so there shouldn't be that many soups of mud uh, on one bed. If we treat Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj as the king of kings, he should be given the treatment of King of Kings. Yeah. So going into our Guru Karma and doing that little bit to make sure that you know, so, uh, our Guru's respect yeah, is being given to him. Yeah. What else do you reckon is a way forward? Oh, yeah, the did like 10 children. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
have to discuss this now. <laughs> yeah. He likes there's a lot of people in uh, who we look up to yeah. who aren't actually fighting for us. Yeah. That's the one I'm going to say is that yeah. fight the real people, fight the fight for the real people, yeah. support the real people, support the real media, and don't follow Punjabi Chitto Digan Bayana. In English, yeah, don't follow the agents, don't support the agents. That's what I'm going to say. In, in terms of in Punjab, for instance, a lot of our leaders, they're not our leaders. And I think you basically, most of the things I normally complain about, I guess, um, you've already covered. That's what I wanted to say. Now, now again, you know, thanks for reminding us again. Uh, you know, those, those people, like I was saying earlier, okay, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> yeah, because if I do that, it's going to upset a lot of people. But, you know, I looked, at, I looked at that leadership and I felt so sad inside, so sad that, you know, this is what we've been reduced, you know, that we're putting our hopes in people. Some of those leaders secured their release from the police station by bargaining with those angs of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, 112 angs, you know there are those 112 angs that were discovered, yeah? Police wanted them in their custody, wanted to treat our Guru's limbs as evidence. They were going to file the, them away as just evidence, but Guru the Sikh, they saw right through that. And you know what they did? They took them to a location where they could do respect of those angs. But those so-called leaders, they bargained their release. They said, we will get those arms to you if you let us go. And those leaders are still there in front of our protests leading the Sangha. Yeah. So what I'm saying here, okay, is we need to wise up. We need to wise up. Look at the tradition of the Khalsa. Okay? Our tradition is not to just accept give a chance, like Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj gave a chance to Bahadur Shah to deliver justice, but he chose not to do that. So Guru Sahib can say, then we'll get justice ourselves. No one's going to give us justice. We're going to have to fight for it. Yeah? No amount of online petition or a Facebook page uh, is going to give us the justice. I'm, I'm sorry to say that. Yeah? But we do, like I said, I'm not knocking those people who do that. Yeah, But we're going to have to do much more than that. Or we come Carillo, yeah, do that as well, but don't let you know, that be just it, the solution. We have to do a lot more. Go back to our tradition, look at our tradition, educating people about what is actually going on happening. So many of my Rishtelar, back in Punjab even, and here even, every time you try to speak to them, you don't want to say, ah, you guys are too like, you're extremists. You guys are just extremists. I think somebody needs to sit them down and explain what extremism is and what love and passion and compassion for innocent lives and for your guru is. Somebody needs to explain to them. So even if we can just do that and educate our own to you know, to kind of highlight what's actually going on, what's actually happening to us. I think that's a victory in itself. Because once we change the minds of the people, you know how many people can they put out the kidney uh sicker in there? Can they sicker in there? Forty million. Yeah? Fourteen million, yeah? Fourteen million. Every single sick bows down in front of Guru Maharaj. Any of those who are married have got married around Guru Granth Sahib Ji Patsam Maharaj. Any of those have ever had a kid has gone and Matha Degna asked for blessings from Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. And that same Guru they go to, and it's a very central part of their life, yeah, was taken and is ung torn apart. How many of those 14 billion are on the streets? We're looking at what? 30,000? Looking at 60,000? It shows that those people either don't know or don't care simply.
because the machinery, the gold machinery, has sold it to them. So hang on, you don't want to get involved in this. They're just a bunch of terrorists, a bunch of extremists. Go about your lives. Don't bother with this. And you know those people are buying it. Yeah. Changing mind. Even if you change one person's mind, you've done enough. But you have to believe in it and find out for yourself to raise that awareness to people. Okay? So, and ask Guru Maharaj for help. Do Ardas. Yeah? Worldwide, there's going to be a kind of side happening. This is what the funds, your nation, your people have decided that if nothing else at the moment, we're going to do a kind of side. I think they're starting tomorrow all around the globe. Yeah? Take part in it. Yeah? Encourage your rested art to go along. Sit there, do some seva. Yeah? And ask Maharaj, Maharaj, I don't know what I should be doing, but please show me. And you know, you Guru will show you the way. Yeah? So we have to make that step. So uh, I'm going to finish it there. So thank you so much for having this. And uh, like I said before, if I've said anything to offend anybody, that wasn't my intention. So, uh, you know, I apologise if uh, you found my views a bit extreme. Then, uh, you know, I apologise if you did, but I don't apologise for what, what I said. But I apologise if it's offended you. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. Bye, Bye. 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 B